Welcome to Brampton Focus. When you're talking about political parties and those that run the province of Ontario, there's an old movie title that comes to mind. It's called The Usual Suspects. You've got the Liberals, you've got the Conservatives, and of course you've got the NDP. Well, as of late, there is another party that is rising and making real inroads in the topics that we discuss and the things that are important to people in Ontario, and that is the Ontario Green Party. My name is Michael A. Charbon. Next we meet the leader of the Ontario Green Party, Mr. Mike Schneider right here on Brenton Focus. And welcome back to Brenton Focus. You know this party has never held a seat in the provincial legislature. But in 2007, they uh, actually occupied 8% of the popular vote. Pretty impressive, you would think. Well, in 2008, sorry, that was 2007, 8% of the vote. In 2008, they represent 13% of the popular vote. Um, they're known as a party that is socially progressive, fiscally conservative, and environmentally aware, and that's the Green Party. Now, if you say the Green Party immediately, you think of the federal Green Party with Elizabeth May. But what we're talking about today is the Ontario Green Party. And my guest, Mr. Mike Schreiner, uh, was elected the leader of the Ontario Green Party in 2000. 2009 and joins us here today on Brampton Focus. Mike, welcome to Brampton Focus. Michael, it's a pleasure to be on Brampton Focus. Uh, Mike, you got a hard gig to look up. You got a, a liberal uh, majority government. You've got uh, two other parties, the Liberals and the Conservatives. Um, we've had the opportunity to interview uh, Patrick Brown, the leader of the Conservatives, and Andrea Horwath uh, from the NDP. We thought it only fitting that we would interview you, but it's so difficult to uh, be able to gain momentum because you haven't had a seat yet. How, how are you going to fix that? for the folks uh, in Ontario. How are we going to get um, a Green Party person elected provincially? Well, first of all, the Green Party is going to continue to drive policy change in Ontario. We're leading the charge on fundraising reform. We've been leading the charge on climate action. We've been leading the charge on the new economy and how Ontario repositions itself. We're going to leverage the change we're already bringing to Queen's Park into a seat. Uh, I plan to get elected in Guelph in the 2018 provincial election. Uh, I got 20% of the vote in the last election in Guelph, and uh, I intend to win and bring the change that we've been bringing already, we're gonna ramp it up once we have a seat at Queen's Park. Now, uh, you always gotta uh, reference stereotypes, and I, and I don't mean to be uh, demeaning here, but some would say sometimes the Green Party is associated with tree huggers. What do you know about economic? Economics, when it's all about the saving the environment and don't cut down the tree. Al although environment and uh, socially conscious uh, care of our planet is part of your platform, that is not the only thing that you guys are representing. Well, I think I'm the only political leader of the major parties in Ontario that's actually run a business, created jobs, mm. uh, mortgaged my house to start that business. I started one of Ontario's first local uh, organic food businesses in Guelph. 20 years ago. It's actually moved to Brampton. It's very near to this location. And you won business, and it was, business of the year for Brampton, which a is few a few years ago. A valid Absolutely. Point. Yeah. yeah. So, so I've demonstrated an ability to run a successful small business. And if you look at a number of Green Party candidates, and a lot of our supporters are entrepreneurs and small business owners because they understand that the jobs of the 21st century are the jobs in the clean economy. That's the economy we're fighting for. So, uh, in the last election, the last federal election, or the last provincial election, I should say, uh, when we went around uh, Brampton, you could see all the various signs. You're representing the provincial Green Party. Mm -hmm. uh, the biggest optic that most people are aware of is Elizabeth May and the Green Party, the federal mm -hmm. Green Party. Is she a positive or a hindrance to what you're trying to get accomplished? How aligned are you mm -hmm. two? I think Elizabeth's a very big positive for the Green Party of Ontario because in the same way Elizabeth's been a voice of change in Ottawa, she's completely changed the way that even the decorum there by insisting that uh, we focus on, instead of gotcha politics and negative politics, mm. she's brought a positive tone, she's brought honesty, integrity, she focuses on good public policy. That's exactly what I want to do at Queen's Park. That's the kind of change the Green Party of Ontario is going to bring to Queen's Park. It, it is difficult, and we can we can see that in some of the changes that are realizing now with a majority government. I mean, the people's voice is what, uh, what has to be executed. That's why we go to the polls. That's why we vote. Um, 
you have to get skin in the game. It's very difficult. I mean, we've heard from uh, people from the Green Party. They're included uh, in our debates. Brampton focused it in all candidates' debate. Mm -hmm. We always include the Green Party. Their voice is as important as any other party. But how do you break through? How, how do you make that step? W what's it going to take to actually get someone to have a seat? Well, I think the biggest thing is is, is electing that first Green MPP. Mm -hmm. Because one of the biggest barriers we face, I have people tell me this all the time, like, you guys have the best platform, you have the best policy ideas, you're candidates are very well spoken, you're an articulate leader, but can you really get elected? And so we've shown that in um, BC, both uh, provincially with Andrew Weaver and federally with Elizabeth May. We've elected MLAs in New Brunswick and Prince Edward Island now. Um, we think the same thing is going to happen here in Ontario. And the best way we're going to do that is grassroots engagement and mobilization. That's how we do it. We have hundreds of volunteers working our campaigns. You know, we fund our party through thousands of small donations, and it's that kind of grassroots engagement and mobilization that's going to elect our first Green MPP. So two things come up. I don't want to lose the grassroots engagement thing, but I, before I forget, it, you look at, at parties, and the Liberal Party is, is famous for that. They hear a good idea from someone else, and they adopt it themselves, and then they run to the front of the classroom and say, we thought of this, we thought of this. Where in actual fact, when you talk about raising funds, which relates to, mm. you're using the Bernie Sanders uh, formula, if you wish, uh, borrowing a, a, a Democrat uh, premise of small grassroots funding, lots of people, small amounts of money. But the Green Party was a party that brought forth that we have to look at electoral reform and we have to look, look at electoral funding in more of a realistic point of view. And that's what the Liberals are talking about now. Well, we want to get big money out of politics, and part of the reason we're focused on getting big money out of politics is, is the Liberals, ha the Kathleen Wynne Liberals in particular, mm -hmm. they've had like 190 private fundraisers raise about $19 million. And you can't tell me that having a private $100,000 fundraiser uh, where you get special access, you can buy access to the premier, is not affecting public policy in this province. And it's breeding cynicism. It's making people upset. It's what's leading to, you know, what mm -hmm. you're seeing with Bernie Sanders. Well, talking people about want big money out of politics. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Green Party's standing for. And we're going to keep pushing and fighting until the other parties pass legislation that gets big money out so of politics. So about 30 seconds left in this segment. How would you put a bow on that as far as, ele uh, as, far as el election financing is concerned? We have to lower donation limits. We have to lower spending limits. We have to eliminate corporate and union donations. That's what we're fighting for. We're talking to Mr. Mike Schreiner. He is the the liberal, he was the leader, sorry, of the Green Party elected in 2009. When we come back in segment number two, we're going to talk about, they call it ecological fiscal reform, which is called green tax shifting. An interesting concept, but we'll have this when we return. My name is Michael A. Sherpa, and you're watching Brampton Focus, and we're talking to the Green Party of Ontario. Back right after this. And welcome back to Brampton Focus. Uh, you know the Liberals, you know the Conservatives, you know the NDP, but did you know that there is a Green Party in Ontario? And they had a leader that was elected in 2009, and they're bringing forth ideas that are putting other par parties in a position of pause, because sometimes some would say they're adopting some of their ideas. My guest today is Mr. Mike Schreiner, and he is the leader of the Ontario Green Party. Um, Mike, when we left, we, we talked about um, uh, what it's like to try and break through. Let, let's talk about fiscal uh, things here. Um, one of the things that the Green Party talks about is you call it ecological fiscal reform. You talk about green tax shifting. Um, I got to question you on that because here we are in, in a situation where um, the Ontario uh, province is in debt to three point, uh, what is it, three point or th $308 billion in debt. The mm -hmm. uh, Liberal government just said that they're running a deficit of 29.4. How in God's name can a party come up and say we want green tax shifting? How are you going to do that? <laughs> well, the Green Party has a very simple idea is tax the things that you don't want in life pollution as an example so let's put a tax on carbon pollution let's put a tax on on waste 
and lower taxes on the things that you do want, like jobs. And so one of the big things we've been calling for is lowering payroll taxes on small businesses mm -hmm. by raising the employer health tax exemption to help small businesses create more jobs. I think people want jobs. I don't think we want pollution. That's a very simple concept, very easy to implement if you have the political will to do it. Uh, political will to do it. Uh, that leads into my next question. One of the, uh, I mean, I, I've had the, the fortunate opportunity here at Brampton Focus to talk to ministers of parliament or members of parliament, I should say, uh, members of provincial parliament. Uh, everybody talks about, well, we can raise taxes and we got to spend, but I never hear anybody say we're going to cut anything. <laughs> because if you talk about cutting something, you're never going to get elected. When are we going to hear a party stand up and say, we got to stop spending, we got to protect the people of Ontario, and and we've got to be fiscally responsible. Well, we we believe in fiscal responsibility, and sometimes that's having an honest conversation with people, and sometimes the honest conversation is we have to raise revenues, and sometimes the honest conversation is we have to be more fiscally responsible and cut things here to save money and be more efficient. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about both. So we'll talk about the fact that, you know what, if you want to build transit, magic money and fairy dust isn't going to build transit in this province. It's going to take revenue and so one of the things we would propose doing is putting a parking uh, levy throughout the gta to help raise money to dedicate it to transportation funding so we don't do it through debt financing which is what the liberals are doing it or selling off hydro one which is a horrible decision we would do it by saying raise money this way but dedicated we don't want to, go to transportation. Like London, it cost you forty bucks to drive into London. I It'd didn't say I do support congestion charges, but I didn't say congestion charge. I said a parking levy, two dollar a day parking levy. But you're putting raises... more taxes on us who are driving and trying to create a living. It... But I'm trying to get cars off the road. Congestion costs. Congestion. You congestion. Congestion costs our economy six billion dollars a year right now. It's going to go to fifteen billion dollars if we don't deal with this. I can tell you from running my local food company and trying to run delivery vans into. Yeah. Toronto, it costs businesses a lot of money to deal with gridlock. I want to end that gridlock. The only way you're going to do it is to build transportation infrastructure, particularly transit infrastructure. Magic money and fairy dust isn't going to pay for so, it. So we're going to be honest with you. Other parties will no, pretend up. like it, you can pay for it with fairy dust. We're going to be honest with people about it. What do you say about uh, the Liberal government now uh, trying to sell Hydro One? It makes $750 Man. million dollars yeah. a year. They're talking about potentially selling part of the LCBO, talking about selling the OLG. These are all annuities, and I say that with all honesty honesty that return money to the bottom line of Ontario yeah. that is keeping us in in the stature and in the in, in the, the level of comfort that we wish to live here. How are you going to mitigate that? Yeah. The sell off of Hydro One by the Liberal government is a horrendous decision. It's a money loser. The financial accountability officer said it's a money loser. Uh, Auditor General said it's a money loser. Yeah. Independent studies have said it's a money loser. Not, and not Hydro One. The sale of it the is a loser. The sale of Hydro right. One's a loser yeah, because the, profit, the, the, pro the profit, the profit from yeah. it's about $400 million a year that goes directly to the province. 750. 750 million dollars a year is what Hydro One is to make. Yeah. And you look at one of the largest conglomerates that controls alcohol uh, alcohol and wine purchase in the world. It is the LCBO, yeah. the Liquor Control Board of Ontario. Yeah. It's like selling your house off to pay for a vacation and then you have to pay rent the rest of your life. Makes no sense whatsoever. That's why we're fighting against it. But the problem is the Liberals have 100% of the power with only 38% of the vote because of our outdated electoral system. Well, let's go to that. And let's, so, okay, and so want, all of us opposition parties are trying to stop this, but we don't have the power to stop it. So let's talk about electoral reform. I mean, that's another one of those things. I mean, the Liberals said uh, when they got elected federally that that was one of the things that they wanted to do. One person, one vote. Absolutely. Uh, right now it's called first past the post. For any of you political science majors out there, you can rhyme it off. But basically it's certain Certain regions have more seats than other regions, uh, so it isn't necessarily one person, one vote. Uh, you want to be able to change that. You want one person, one vote. Some would say that it's going to clutter our political system. Others have said there's it works just great in Europe. Well, if you look around the world, uh, proportional representation works fantastic. I think it's fundamentally wrong when you have a situation like we do in Ontario where 38.5% of the vote gets you 100% of the power. Federally, the Trudeau Liberals got 39% of the vote. They have 100% of the power. 
That's just wrong. That means millions of Canadians are not represented by somebody they voted for. So if you're, as an example, if you're a conservative who lives in downtown Toronto in a riding that usually always goes liberal, what incentive do you have to vote if your vote doesn't count? Me, likewise, if you're a liberal who lives in rural Ontario in a riding that mostly always goes conservative, you're less likely to vote because like my vote doesn't count. So that's take, why you're only seeing about half the population with actually minute, with vote. A minute, with a minute left uh, and using the fairy dust concept, in 2008 you represented 13% of the popular vote. Could we have conceivably said that you would have had some seats? Oh, absolutely. The Green Party in, would have probably about 10 seats in the provincial legislature and probably around 15 federally. And so can imagine we could be bringing issues to the table that the other parties are afraid to talk about. And that's something Canadians are missing out on. We're talking to the leader of the Ontario Green Party, Mr. Mike Schreiner. When we come back for our final segment, which is our third segment, uh, and this is a pet peeve for me. This is Aberfoyle who's uh, bottling water. And you talk about a deal, uh, 6.4 million liters of water for $20 and three cents you're watching breath and focus my name is michael a sharp i'll back right after this to Brampton Focus. His name is Mike Schreiner and he leads the Green Party of Ontario. Uh, when I left um, us, Mike, before this being our final segment, um, there is something here I, I gotta tell you. It, I, I can't believe this. Aberfoyle, which is outside of Guelph, right. which is a company that bottles water, uh, they um, it comes down to, it's it's beyond my comprehension, $3.71 for a million liters of water. And they're trying to renew their contract now yeah. where they want to take 6.4 million liters of water and pay $20.03. That's right, folks. 6.4 million liters of water. What I pay to fill my pool and to water my lawn compared to this, why is this happening? And why is it that the Green Party are the people that are waving this flag? Well, we just think it's outrageous that the province of Ontario only charges companies like Nestle, which is the company operating at Aberfoyle, $3.71 per million. Hear me straight, that's per million liters of water they take. I was at Queen's Park recently and I was telling the reporters there, and I know one of your guys handed me this and said, you want a bottle of water? I refuse to drink this. I refuse to drink this. I took the reporters downstairs and I said, you know what? Look at this. This costs like, I think it was $1.99, two bucks or something in the vending machine in the basement of Queen's Park. And we, as the people of Ontario, get $3.71 per million. This is 500 milliliters per million liters. They like it's outrageous, they're ripping us off, we're giving our water away and it's wrong. They, they say that uh, 4.8 million liters of water a day, well water, is being removed into uh, an independent company and they want to raise that to 6.4 million. I said to you uh, in the break, Mike, this is something that um, uh, that I don't think enough Ontarians know about. Don't spill your water. Yeah, I won't. Uh, I'm not, not open to that. Ontarians know about. <laughs> We've got to get this message out. I, I hope that you're not going to let this uh, lay still. We are absolutely not going to let this lay still. We are going to fight for Ontario's water. This water belongs to the people of Ontario. We should not be giving it away. I mean, uh, I find that uh, reckless when we look at uh, other places in the world where lakes are drying up. Uh, Absolutely. Where people are talking about fresh water and, uh, and here we are. Four point, I can't believe, 4.8 million liters a day, and they're paying 375 for a million. I can't. And Michael, this has huge implications for our economy as well, because the food and agricultural sector is the biggest employer in this province. Water is essential to growing yeah. the food that we eat and supporting that industry. So uh, another issue which uh, the Green Party of Ontario uh, is very much in the first uh, driver's seat, as one would say, is uh, the First Nations uh, Grassy Narrows, uh, just north of Kenora. There's a, a mercury point poisoning problem there. And uh, you actually, Mike, you wrote a letter to Kathleen mm -hmm. Wynne. You said, uh, and I'll quote you, you said, uh, your government cannot continue to drag its feet on this issue. People's lives are at stake. Um, I don't know how many 
people remember this, but uh, give us a bit of background on, on Grassy Narrows and the mercury problem that exists there. Yeah, so back in the 1960s, a pulp and paper mill in Dryden dumped a bunch of mercury poisoning into the water, contaminating the water system and you know, creating huge economic problems, get to mm -hmm. shut down the commercial fish industry, close fishing lodges, put people out of work. But more importantly, it's affected three generations of people's health. People in Grassy Narrows are still dealing with mercury poisoning. And what do we have to do now? So in 1984, there was a plan put forward to Cabinet in Ontario to clean it up. Mm -hmm. Cabinet denied it. Ever since then, the government has just ignored the problem. We're saying we can't ignore this problem any longer. A new report was released just last month showing that we can clean up Grassy Narrows. Mm -hmm. The Premier has said, oh, we're concerned or whatever, but she hasn't committed to cleaning up the mercury. We owe it to the people of Grassy Narrows, and we owe it to all Ontarians to say that when we have a problem like this, the people of Ontario and the government of Ontario will step up and do the right thing and clean up the poisoning. And we, we, we owe it to our First Nations people. Absolutely. So there's two issues that uh, I don't think would have been brought to the fore if it wasn't for uh, the Green Party. So if you were going to rub your magic, uh, your magic ball and think about uh, where you're going to be in the 2018 election, um, what are going to be some of the things that you're going to do, the metrics that you're going to ramp up? And as we talked about the Bernie Sanders aspect of small amounts of funding grassroots, how are you going to make a difference so we can see someone from uh, the Green Party sitting in our provincial legislature? Well, one of the things we're going to do, and we're going to get this done in the next six months, so I'm not going to wait till 2018 on this right. one, is we're going to get big money out of Ontario politics. We're going to ban corporate and union donations, and we're going to force the government to lower donation and spending limits so we can make politics about people. Not about people with deep pockets, not about insiders, not about lobbyists, not about people who can buy access to the premier. We're going to make it about people like you and me, the citizens and voters of this province. And so when we look forward to the 2018 election, the thing I've committed to is we're about honesty, integrity and good public policy. But you need money to get that message out. Parties will say that without some money to grease the machines and to be able to get the ads out, how are you going to raise it? How is, how is the Green Party being, you're the fourth dog in the race here. Yeah, me. absolutely. So there are two things we're advocating. So the first thing is we do grassroots fundraising. Right. Like I feel the burn. When Bernie Sanders talks about yeah. grassroots fundraising, that's what we're about. Yeah, it's it's 50 and Thousands of people, yeah, right. 50 bucks, 100 bucks. That's democracy. That is democracy in action. That's how we're going to raise the money to fund our campaigns is through grassroots politics. Because we want the people, good public policy, to trump insider interest, backroom politics, and all the things about so politics that people don't that, like. We're saying that. i got about a minute and a half left. Talk to the folks at home. How can they get in contact with you? How can they find out more? Because I'm telling you, the more you read, the more you know. Go to gpo.ca. Follow me on Twitter at Mike Schreiner or follow the Ontario Greens on Twitter at Ontario Greens. Um, follow us on Facebook. GPO.ca is your entry point into learning more about the party. So with about a minute left, is there one particular um, policy or aspect of the way that uh, of the Ontario uh, province is being run now that if you were given the reins that you would change? Well, I think one of the biggest ones we would change right now is the new climate change plan. Mm -hmm. Because we think the province has chosen the wrong mechanism. They've gone with cap and trade. We want to go with fee and dividend, which would be more effective and help create more jobs and usher in the green economy that's going to employ the people in the 21st century. He's a passionate guy. His name is Mike Schreiner. You may have not uh, seen him before, but you've heard him on radio. You can uh, check them out uh, on their website. It's the Ontario Green Party. And and uh, they've got some interesting things to read. It gives you perspective. I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Schreiner for being here today, and I wish you the best of luck. My pleasure, uh, My name Michael. is Michael Charbon. You've been watching Brampton Focus. We encourage you to participate. Go to our Facebook page at bramptonfocus.ca and participate. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.